Hello Unique Game Fan, a big week of releases awaits, so let's get cracking with Ogre Chambers DX, an enhanced release of an action roguelite title that was previously on itch.io, where you're blasting away at enemies in an ever-changing arena, but the best part is that this is free, so why not give it a spin? A game with a completely different vibe is Pasha Planet Reborn, a wonderful hand-drawn point-and-click adventure game set in a closed-off underground city filled with anthropomorphic dogs. Of course, puzzles and the art are the main draw, but the story involves our protagonist wanting to escape said city in order to see the world outside, looking absolutely delightful. Swinging back to the action end of things is Star Survivor, a vampire survivor's style bullet heaven roguelite but with a sci-fi theme where it did release a free prologue demo which has been very well received. As a side note, I've noticed that publisher Arabit is almost exclusively scooping up this type of game so I would trust their judgement in the space. If you love management sims, one military camp might be of interest where you are running your own boot camp and having to train fresh recruits. Eventually, they do graduate and can get sent out on missions in order to end the war, where the very happy tune to this trailer sure does undermine the grim realities of war, but on the management front, it looks pretty decent. I did preview Rhythmos in my YouTube Shorts series, Indie Games Daily, so check that out if you have not, where this is a delightful little puzzle game where you're essentially fiddling with musical toys, where your actions and choices do result in wonderful soundscapes. It looks very pleasant in an almost ASMR kind of way, where I'm interested in how much content there is in this. Just one bigger title this week in Scars Above, a good looking sci-fi third person action adventure game where our heroine is exploring an alien planet where, I hope that the developers don't take this the wrong way, but it looks like a decent D game that might be fun. I'm Arnold Rauers, and this is Card Crawl Adventure. Smaller games begin with the Steam release of Card Crawl Adventure, a roguelite card game with deck building elements, getting a release on PC after mobile versions will leave you to the developer. Passing mechanic. By drawing a path through your cards, you combine attacks and magical spells to defeat devious monsters and tavern bosses. Each game, you visit each tavern's deck merchant to draft new cards for your deck. A full adventure consists of completing 5 out of 7 taverns. On a randomly generated map, you decide which taverns you visit and which bosses you will face. 
After each completed tavern, you can pick from a set of rewards, which includes equipping new items and magical charms to help you on your journey. The game features a variety of different characters, each with their own unique cards, unlockable equipments and playstyles. Character cards can be upgraded and offer another layer of customization in each game. By completing quests, defeating bosses and looting shiny treasures, you gain gold, which can then be spent for more upgrades or be hoarded for even better high scores. But watch out for the tavern barkeepers, because they don't like adventurers who don't pay that tab. The structure Among Debris looks like an intense brick breaker title that is inspired by air hockey, where you're essentially moving the pedal around to deflect projectiles to hit your enemy, looking like arcade fun. Dreadful River is a management sim title where you're leading an army down a river on a raft having to protect something known as the Eternal Crown where keeping the raft afloat is one of the most critical aspects. While Esperia Uprising of the Scarlet Witch does have the telltale look that it was made in a Tactics RPG Maker program, probably as RPG Studio if I'm not mistaken, it does have some original art and visual novel elements set in a world not unlike Fire Emblem and might be of interest. We also have the prologue demo of this action roguelite named Gatekeeper Eclipse, which thankfully is not a Vampire Survivors clone, although there does seem to be some influence where it does look impressive visually as well. We don't get many stealth titles these days, which is why Gone Rogue is of interest, but I'll leave you to the developer to explain some key features. You will play as a thief named Jack, and make robberies not only for personal gain, but also to help people suffering from the dictatorship and the echoes of the endless war. 
there will be a lot of tactical opportunities at your disposal. Observe the surrounding environment to calculate properly the time of the robbery. Distract. Cheat. Or even temporarily neutralize your enemies with a dozen different gadgets and skills. Pay attention to the security guards viewing areas and try to avoid them. But if you take care to turn off the light sources, it will allow you to move more safely. Some enemies are more dangerous than others. For example, snitches can detect traces of Jack, and armored soldiers are invulnerable to attacks. If Jack is spotted, the alarm will be raised, and the nearest guards will start searching for the intruder. At any time, you could stop the game and think about your next actions. And in the auto-pause mode, the game will stop after each action of Jack. The top-down tactical perspective allows you to inspect the entire location in order to track the movements of hostile characters and better plan your actions. We want you to be able to play the way you want. In the local slums, you could talk to various people, replenish supplies, learn important information, and prepare for the next robbery. You choose the necessary tools and gadgets yourself, as well as specializations. These are unique features that can affect your style of play. For example, the specialization Leader of the Pack will make you friends with dogs. And the specialization Electronics Guru will give you the opportunity to hack electronics with your bare hands. Plan ahead. Experiment. Improve your skills. And in the end, leave with rich loot. Every day I ask myself, how could this have happened? It started small, on a day of great hope. From talks on how to fix this country, to the actual drive to make America great again. This kind of title is not usually my cup of tea, but I Am Your President seems to be fairly hyped, where it's a simulation title where you play as a US president with the power to change the world, where despite the theme, it's from a Polish developer, where publisher Playway seems to be cranking out a whole bunch of simulation titles, but that's a story for another day. Oh no. Anyway, the election is coming and we have to win the people over. Will you choose wisely? Will you be ready? I know you are. How do I know? Because I am your president. Yep, that's me, the king. You're probably wondering how I ended up here. When I was crowned, I thought I was going to sort this kingdom out. But it turns out that my council could cast a vote on every single decision I made. An intriguing looking entry of the week is King of the Castle, a multiplayer political party game where you have to lead your kingdom, where your friends are on the king's council and will influence the outcome, looking to be an interesting ultimate take on the party on the game. Were my friends. Well, they treated my reign like some kind of game, voting on things just because they thought they were funny. In the end, my nobles raised their banners in rebellion against me. And, well, you know how that turned out. Being king isn't as easy as it looks. So there you go. Maybe you think you could do better, but I have my doubts. Get away from me, you! Get go on, get off! Nobia! Mask of Fury looks like a decent multiplayer brawler with fun attacks and combat where it seems fairly hyped but looks like another one of these to me.
Holly Vita is quite clearly inspired by Monument Valley, so I suppose it's interesting to see another take on this type of puzzle game. This next title is a curiosity since Public Land Hunter is a hunting simulation game but in pixel art where it looks more accessible than Big Buck Hunter 2023 or whatever the latest 3D hunting sim is. I did preview Remedium Sentinels during the Steam Mix Festival, but this is another Vampire Survivor style title but with a steampunk theme that looks more promising as compared to the other clones releasing this week. Stickman Trenches is a real-time strategy game set in the trenches of World War I, looking to be a real throwback to the Flash game era. The Ouroboros King is a turn-based roguelike title that is based on chess, but of course, when the developer has put his own spin on this with new units, looking pretty intriguing. Hey, if you made it this far, subscribe to my weekly newsletter to keep on top of all things indie games, link in the description below. <sighs> okay, that was quite a bunch to go through, but I've saved the best for last, with the top 5 beginning with Voltaire the Vegan Vampire, which, to my knowledge, is only the second such farming action roguelite title where you play as a vampire turning away from blood to grow his own food but his father wants to pull him back in. You have to both attend to your crops while fending off enemies who want to destroy them, being a whimsical take on this genre that looks pretty good.
A smaller title that seems to be going under the radar is Other War, a roguelite title with both tower defense and bullet hell elements where you're playing as an avenging angel, defending the gates of heaven against the forces of hell. Of course, the construction of towers is the primary way you deal with enemies, but it appears that our character has plenty of direct attack abilities as well, with a good pixel art look to round off the package. One look at Max Monster and it immediately got my attention since this is a turn-based RPG with a little bit of an Undertale vibe or more accurately, a reverse Undertale kind of setup. You play as a big bulky monster who has to protect a lost little girl and to help her get back home where the world dies if she cries, so the stakes are certainly high. I like the contrast between the 99999 HP of the monster versus the girl's 40 in combat, where it's an atypical JRPG with a pixel art look that makes it look like an absolute delight. We will also be getting the latest title in what I suppose is now the Aether franchise with Dungeons of Aether, being a spin-off of the platform fighter Rivals of Aether, but in a whole new arena. There's dungeon crawling and 1v1 combat for our protagonist, featuring 4 characters with, I believe, unique story campaigns, where the combat and stat systems do look intriguing. Given the quality of their other games, I have a feeling that this will be good, but it's another turn-based JRPG which I cannot say no to. We also get the Steam and 1.0 release of this tactical RPG which has been kicking around on the Epic Games Store, where most interestingly, this has both real-time and turn-based elements, making Phantom Brigade look absolutely fantastic, where a special mention goes to indie game ultra fan Sean Heach, where you can find more upcoming tactics titles in this video. <laughs> 